The time has come to sit down and talk a bit about the albums by 2D groups and Seiyuu artists that stood out for their quality, unique twists to already tried and true formulas, or that took things a step further and innovated or further improved their trademark sound. Time to celebrate the best albums by 2D groups and Seiyuu artists released in 2021. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyuu Lounge. Welcome to Seiyuu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Best Albums Released by Seiyuu Artists and 2D Groups in 2021. I love to wrap up the year with a talk about the albums that were in constant repeat for me since I got to review them. These albums have impressive quality in their production, some in their performances, others in the concepts or even how unique or refreshing the sound is. All are CDs in which Mel Seiyu gave their all to impress with outstanding performances that left me wanting more. A note that this is a highly subjective episode and it may happen that my choices of the best albums by Seiyu artists and 2D groups in 2021 won't match your choices. As such, I invite you to hop in in the episode's comments section on YouTube and share with me which were the albums released in 2021 that you had on repeat or that impressed you the most. A note that these entries are ranked from 7 to 1. At the core of this ranking is the rating given to the album review, the overall enjoyment, if it is an album or a single, with albums being worth more than singles, quality of the performances and replay value. Of course, personal preference also comes into play. Let's kick off this brief talk about each of these seven outstanding entries. Mamoru Mienu with Tome Mamoru Mienu was back on his groove with Tome, a single that will play around with your emotions as soon as the first notes kick in. In Tome, listeners will get to experience three polarizing styles of performances and songs by Mamoru Mienu and oh man, this was good. It still has Mienu's trademark style, it also caters to international fans with the song, obviously with a western pop vibe, and it still showcases his talents as a singer. This is a good balance that makes the best out of his strengths as a solo artist. The single's highlight is Tome, a beautiful stripped-down ballad that will tug at your heartstrings. Miano made sure to deliver a hauntingly beautiful performance that made it almost impossible to not get slightly emotional. But you still have New Disco in question, another song that I'd rank pretty high among Miano's best dance tunes, not to mention the feel-good track Zancho. This was the most consistent I've heard Mamoru Miano in a long time. Glad to see him back on his groove, having fun while showcasing his talents as a singer and overall entertainer. If you haven't checked this single, I welcome you to do so. Tome is a massive upgrade in which you find Miano fine-tuning his music into a mature blend of trademark tunes, trendy songs and tracks that highlight his singing skills. Shugo Nakamura with Natural Shugo Nakamura's Natural is a collection of beautiful songs with a hopeful, bright outlook on life, plenty of good vibes and some love in the mix. In a way, this album perfectly encompasses who Nakamura is as a solo artist and in another it serves almost as a letter to his fans or just those that appreciate his natural, semi-acoustic brand of rock. This album is all about its semi-acoustic rock sound. Some songs have sprinkles of pop, others of jazz, funk, and when he stops all the unplugged music, he goes all out electric for fast-paced rocking tunes. But there's a sense of continuity between the songs. All feel the same purpose, all have the same good vibes at their core. Shugo Nakamura makes things sound easy when it comes to his performances. He does plenty of flourishes, goes up and down the scale within brief, tricky parts. He has a lot of emotion in himself that carries over to his performances, but he also can go extremely simple and raw, as well as technical and fancy. 
His versatility gave life to all the songs in natural and without notice. When this album wraps up, you'll feel energized and with a smile plastered on your face. Kotaro Nishiyama with Laundry Kotaro Nishiyama is that Seiyu artist that I feel is extremely underrated. He's crafty in his performances, going for melodic whisper voice for his unique brand of city pop and new disco. Kotaro Nishiyama's sophomore mini-album Laundry is a vast improvement from City and it was already a stellar mini-album to begin with. Something I deeply appreciate in his music and it is something that is only done by him among male Seiyu artists is how loungy his sound is. You can lose yourself in those chill instrumentals, melancholic atmospheric synths, or just in the good danceable vibes brought in by the funky guitars and groovy bass lines. And in this album, that is no exception. The bass and guitar work in this mini album is off the charts. It is fun, groovy and extremely funky capturing memories of a past some may have never lived, fleshing those out and taking everyone for a nostalgic ride painted by neon lights. Laundry has a collection of classy dreamy tunes that have a loungy danceable sound and crafty performances by Kotaro Nishiyama that once again shows that he knows exactly what he is doing, making his unique singing tone and skill set as a singer shine. Toshki Masuda with Origin Toshki Masuda had a near flawless outing with his second full-length album, Origin. Consistency was key in making the world that Masuda wanted to create, exploring his guitar rock roots come to life. Origin dives deep into Toshki Masuda's passion for rock music, bringing to the forefront powerful tunes nodding at all those influences, while also keeping it interesting and emotional at all times. It has several highlights, with Ordinary standing out as the best song in the album, a song that explores a funky sound and in which fans will find Masuda performing on a higher key than usual. Asuakito, the resident emotional ballad, will render you to tears thanks to its gentle instrumental, the hopeful message in the lyrics and Masuda's tender, smooth vocals. But there's also Moso Merry Go Round and Koe Ni Naranai Koe, songs in which you will find Masuda in his purest state as a solo artist. You can tell he's having fun performing those shredding rock tunes, and that excitement and passion carry over to the other, equally good, songs in Origin. Origin is a massive improvement to Toshki Masuda's sound, his best album to date and a highlight in 2021. Trigger with Variant The only 2D group making its way to this top is Trigger's astounding concept album, Variant. This is a statement album. It is dramatic, aggressive, raw and fragile in equal measures, and it packs quite the punch while being completely different from the music the group has released before. There's a hunger to succeed and the will to fight well present in this concept album. Coming together, improve together, to be their best version of themselves and be as cohesive and perfect as a unit as possible. Trigger sure pulled off every single one of those feelings, fleshing those out in a collection of songs that will be intense, heartbreaking, fun, groovy and by the end of it all, an intimate deep look at a group that wants to be at the top while facing impossible odds. And within this collection of songs arrives one of the best songs released in 2021, Valiant. It is unlike anything Trigger has released before. The talented trio casts their allure and sexiness aside and don a dark and aggressive sound with quite the weirdly refreshing masculine intensity. As a result, you can tell that the performance and instrumental in Valiant perfectly encapsulates Trigger's own growth and hunger main concepts present in the album. This is a song that adds hip-hop to the trio's repertoire, as well as the very first song in which all members rap. 
Coming from a group known for their sexy and elegant sound, this was a massive surprise, but a welcomed one as the trio consisting of Wataru Hatano, Soma Saito and Takuya Sato absolutely nailed those parts as if it was their second nature. Trigger is a versatile and talented group in constant improvement and pulling off, time and time again, the craziest of things that you'd think were impossible. Variant is that impossible made possible. They are ready to claim their throne and won't be satisfied until they achieve it. Makoto Furukawa with Room of No Name An unshackled Makoto Furukawa took over the spotlight in Room of No Name. And what everyone got was a refreshing display of technique and charisma by the talented singer-songwriter. Instead of a full-out jazz mini-album, Furukawa challenged himself with music genres he's never performed before as a solo artist. And that's how you have a sexy jazz meets disco song, a full-on jazz track, R&B ballad, emo rock and a shredding rock tune. Forsaken Kiss is crazy good. Easily one of the best songs of the year, incredibly elegant, mixing all the right things in disco, funk and jazz to create one hell of an intoxicating song. This is Furukawa's first sexy loungy tune and it is an absolute banger. And give credit where it's due because he performed the song entirely in English to cater to his international fans. There's much more within this mini-album from Furukawa's trademark jazz sound in high glass to a surprising appearance of R&B in Yuri Kagoto Clover and even emo rock in Yunagi Otsurete or shredding high-octane rock in Craving. At its core, the whole album has the theme of desire and the concept of room being explored in completely different ways. With Room of No Name, Furukawa showcased his control, technique and versatility as a singer, delivering unique, some unexpected performances. How does an unshackled Makoto Furukawa sound like? Pretty darn good, I must tell you. Yumu Chida with Equal A collection of high-quality songs creating wonderful stories to dive into, and soundscapes in which you can lose yourself. This is Yumu Uchida's sophomore album, Equal. For fans of Yumu Uchida's R&B pop sound, this album is an absolute treat. There's plenty of R&B songs to bask in, enjoy the good vibes, vibe to the groovy bass lines and appreciate the quality on the vocal end with outstanding performances by Uchida. For those first coming across his music, this is a fantastic album that is easy listening, had plenty of varied performances and explores a couple of different music genres. Worth mentioning that Yumu Chida is one of the best singers among male seiyu, so if this is really the first time you hear about him and this album, you're in for a treat. From Horizon to Equal, there are noticeable changes in the vocal performances and overall sound. As a sign of Yumu Chida maturing as an artist, there's a lot of funk going on, especially in comparison with his first album that went more in line with dance pop. This change alone was enough to give a mature vibe to his performances, and Uchida more than delivered a set of elegant performances to match. Equal is filled with highlights. As I've mentioned on episode 73, my song of the year is I'm Not Complete, a song included in this album. I'm Not Complete is a full-fledged emotional R&B ballad that could have been sung in the 80s, early 90s. The passion in Uchida's performance, the gospel-style choir, or even the lyrics will have your emotions completely messed up. This is a beautiful track with a memorable performance that lends a lot of elements from classic R&B ballads. I don't know why, but the way the song builds up, the way Uchida tackles the performance, those high head voice notes and that slow build up to the climax sort of emulate Prince's iconic ballad, Purple Rain. 
that was the clear inspiration for this performance and even for the song's composition, sharing a similar structure. Favorites aside, all tracks are wonderful on their own. On my side I can easily point out tracks that I'll be listening to non-stop for god knows how long. Equal, Wonderful World, I'm Not Complete and Mirror shown the most for me with those nods to the 90s and Naughty's pop and R&B. As always, the album starts with an a cappella song in which Yumuchida performs all parts within a group. That continues to be an impressive thing coming from him, further showcasing his versatility and massive vocal range. Between all these and new tracks, Equal showcases two different sides to Yumuchida, the solo artist. Two sides that, although different, are equally important, adding a certain it factor to him as a solo artist. This is my album of the year. These were my picks for the seven best albums released in 2021 by male Sayu artists and 2D groups. I do include a couple of additional mentions in the article version of this episode that may be, by now, published on the website. I feel like this year fans of Sayu artists and 2D groups were spoiled with good albums and even some stellar singles and EPs or mini albums. The quality was still not up there with the crazy quality of all CDs released in 2020, but it was still an eventful year, with plenty of quality releases, surprising performances, a lot of growth, new adventures and some unpredictability. Out of the over 130 CDs I reviewed in 2021, these seven were the ones that left a lasting mark either from their nostalgic tone or for how elegantly they sound, or even because of the obvious leap in quality on the vocals. Some made their way to the top because of their unreal consistency or for the unique stories that were told through a carefully crafted collection of songs. More than ever, there are quality singers among Miles Sayu, and with each year, it gets increasingly harder to pick favorites. After this solid year, I look at 2022 with hopes that it is even better, with more mesmerizing albums and performances that will catch us all off guard, yet still being pleasantly refreshing. Next year, you and I will be here talking about, hopefully, another haul of outstanding CD releases. Now tell me, which were the albums by 2D groups released in 2021 that impressed you the most and why? And do you have any favorite album off of the ones released by male Sayu artists? Let me know in the comments on YouTube. I'd love to know what were your favorites in 2021 and what you love about those. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly male Sayu and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of Sayu Lounge. I wish you all a happy new year. Thank you for listening to this podcast in 2021, supporting this small passion project of mine. I hope to find you all around in 2022. Stay awesome and safe, and I'll see you guys around next year. <laughs>